Thank you so much for clicking in today's video. Today's video is going to teach you guys how to carry your games harder and more consistently by using the zoning slash tethering technique. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Just before we get into today's video, make sure you guys click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell for more future content. That way you guys can be the best that you guys can be on the rift. Pantheon this game? No. I decided it, our team was too uh auto stacked. Too now, if you're unfamiliar with the word tethering, it describes something that's tied up. Like a horse that's tethered to a fence, or a dog that's tethered to the person who's walking it. Whenever you can find a person or an animal to keep them in one place, they're tethered. In this case, tethering the enemy and tying yourself to the enemy laner. Mirroring their movement and denying them as much CS as possible by zoning them from CS and possibly even EXP. To be able to effectively do this, you need to know a few things first. Champion abilities. Ranges. Auto attack ranges. Strengths and weaknesses. Who is stronger? Who is weaker? Which champs are early game and which champs are late game? Who has more resources than the other? Than the other? Let's dive right into it. Note: The most dangerous thing to look out for in this kind of lane is Velkov's passive. If Velkov's procs three Velkov's passive on you, deals decomposed or something like that. <clears throat> And that does a shit ton of damage. So that's what you should be looking out for. Don't get hit by Velkov's ability more than three times. Jin's most dangerous attribute in lane is his auto Q auto. His last, very last shot is going to deal the most damage and crit. Therefore, we have to work hard to avoid that. That's why I'm trying to do. Just Oh my god. As you can see, the Velkaz is spamming that abilities Velkaz, left and right. I'm like, just simply dodging them and every time they go on cooldown, so I try to play as aggressive like as I can. You also know that uh, in a lot of these skirmishes and fights, Velkaz and Jin disrespects Brand's range, running Brand's zone of influence, and walks up on Brand. In that case, Brand gets free damage. What does that do? So he's running out of mana? Oh. Now remember to keep in mind, <clears throat> I need to dodge Jin W, I need to dodge Velkaz E, I need to be sure not to walk into uh, Jin's E, and uh, I gotta watch out for Jin's auto Q auto ability, so those are the few things that we're looking out for in this game. I do have shorter range than Jin, but my W does give me a little bit more range than him, um, and we both, both Bran and I both do have shorter range than Velkaz. But as you can see, with Velkaz missing every ability, that's no problem at all. And if Velka and if Brand, Brand ends up landing a uh, stun with his uh, EQ or WQ, we automatically win that fight two v two. Nice. I should have. Uh, I didn't think your ignite was gonna kill Kindred, so I chased Kindred for the kill. The most basic way for me to explain tethering is walking back and forth, baiting enemy abilities and dodging them. Notice how I'm doing the exact thing to Velkov and Jin, walking and baiting their abilities, catching my axis and using W uh, to my advantage to dodge their abilities. Eventually, by doing this, I'll have gain enough of a CS lead on them, gold lead on them, kill lead, kill lead them on, on them, and an item lead on them. And eventually, I won't have to try so hard on them. Cause I just autoed and autoed, so he would auto and, and I just backed out immediately. Oh, I think, Cause I didn't yeah. think they were gonna ultimate. Notice how Valkaz walks up to CS. Because Valkaz doesn't tether properly to me, and because I'm tethering to Velkaz and tying myself to Velkaz, I'm zoning Velkaz and denying Velkaz and Jin CS. But because she doesn't respect too, that, then she pays the price I for missed. it. Velkaz and Jin walks forward, I walk back. Whenever they walk Dang, forward, so I, walk, I walk in. Of course, there's uh, sometimes that they walk in and I, I walk in, but I try to mirror them as much as possible. I try to tie myself to them, visualize the line between us, and walk back and forth 
keeping them tied on to me as much as possible. Dang. That way I can continue to deal as much damage as possible. Was, yeah, you essentially say. gain my lead <laughs> and snowball. So you got to, we have to leave, we gotta press it, right? <laughs> yeah, believe me. Dang. Usually Dragon's that we early have a... game aren't really this OP like you. <laughs> you know, and also we have to uh, press our lead because they don't really have any items and we have a lot of items. Now, who is stronger and who is weaker? This is totally a skill based matchup as if you miss your skill shots on Belkaz or yeah. Brand, then the other lane is stronger. We're diving so, the next one too, depending and on jungler. who hits their skill shots more, that person is stronger. Also, okay. Jin did not harass as much as I did, therefore I am the stronger and I win the lane. How do you know whether a champion is early game or late game? Well, that's very simple. Someone who does a lot of damage early game or utility, such as uh, Blitzcrank, Renekton, Pantheon, um, Zen Zhao. And then in the late game, who do you know is a late game champion? Well, champions who do a lot of damage late game, similar to Vagar, which is when his stacks stack. And then you got Vayne with Vayne's uh, DPS late game. Any marksman, champions like Kale, etc. When it comes to who has more resources, you want to look at the HP, the mana, the items, the levels, the EXP. These are all things that come into account, even the jungler at times, but these are the main components that you have to look out for before going to a 2v2. <laughs> oh, so lucky. <laughs> nope. Wait, so how lucky. did I kill him? Once you know the enemy oh. champion's abilities, oh. you can then Dang. bait out their abilities by walking just very <coughs> close to the range of their ability and then walking right back out. That way you can bait it and don't get hit by it. That's the best way to go about it. And then once their abilities are on cooldown, you can go all in and harass or go in for a short trade depending on which champions are stronger. This is very simple to do and most pros do this every single game. Quick recap of the whole video. Uh, you gotta learn champion abilities, you know, the ranges, auto attack ranges, their strengths and weaknesses, you know, who's stronger and who's late, who's weaker in your matchup, which champs are early game and which champs are late game, who you can take advantage of and who you can't, and then, when you're laning, to see who has more resources, more items than the other, and then you can take advantage, you can win your lane and you can snowball other lanes. Thank you guys so much for watching the whole video, if you guys made it this far, I really, really, truly do appreciate it. Uh, remember to like or dislike the video if you liked it or if you disliked it and then also remember to uh, subscribe and turn on the bell that really helps a lot and um, last of all if you made it this far make sure you comment below what you thought of the video if you liked it or not little boy of hope is out <laughs>